Hello, welcome to the program. This is the Black Ponder. Uh, I'm the host, Neil Trotter, and uh, thank you for joining uh, and watching the show. Uh, today, we're going to return to some ancient Greek philosophy. I haven't covered <laughs> that area of philosophy in, in a while. And we're gonna, going to do that via um, this work right here. This, we're examining this text. We're gonna talk about it is Aristotle's Poetics. So, you know, it's gonna be a, a quick video because uh, yeah, I'm just gonna focus in on one quote. It's not a, a long work and it's more dedicated toward like the like critique or maybe like even just best practices of poetics. It's not all poetry, right? It's just like that the specific poetry of epics or um, tragic poetry, like kind of like the prose poetry, <laughs> like Dante's Inferno, things like that, but particularly, Aristotle's, you know, talking about like the, the ancient Greek uh, famous tragedies and epics like uh, the Odyssey or the Iliad or all the, those other ones about those famous Greek heroes of yore, right? like Hercules or Odysseus or Icarus. <laughs> you know, you have like, what is it? Uh, Oedipus, <laughs> you know, I'm just throwing names, right? Uh, Electra, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> I, I think that Xena Warrior Princess that was just made up American, or was there? Maybe there was an actual Xena, but definitely uh, that <laughs> there was a lot more uh, <laughs> fantasy and lore and storytelling added. <laughs> that was definitely not part of the the ancient <laughs> Greek mythology. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> Aristotle's just talking about about um, you know best practices and you know, kind of like tips and tricks and like what makes the best kinds of prose poetry or like the best kinds of tragedies, the best kinds of like epics. And he's talking about it not only from a, a poetic point of view, all of that's kind of his, his focus. He's talking about it like uh, theatrically too, because they, you know, back in the day, these epics were acted out by characters on the theater, still are to this day, but you know, that was the mainstream entertainment uh, in Aristotle's day. And this is a valuable examination of that uh, critique because during his time, that was like the mainstream art form or entertainment form and you know, where he was living. And so, you know, Aristotle is a very intelligent person, um, you know, heavy on the philosophy. So a lot of people take his insight as very valuable, which, you know, it's true. Uh, would I <laughs> like recommend that in that context? I don't know. Man. I'm not like, a, what is it, a liter literary scholar. So you know, I'm more of a philosopher type of person. So uh, perhaps. So we're not really gonna go there with that video. What I just want more talk about is a quote where he talks more about like, okay, what makes these stories appealing? You know, what, how should you construct these stories to make them entertaining and, you know, draw the, your audience, really make them powerful. And I think that, it, you know, this quote I'm gonna read you is very interesting because it relates to several other points I've made in uh, videos that I've done in the past about several texts. And you know, it kind of goes along with the theme of the Black Ponder, one of the, the, the reoccurring themes that I keep trying to like emphasize. Okay, so to reference, well, first of all, if you have this book, if you have this edition, I'm gonna read from page, uh, this is page 11. It's the last paragraph, but maybe you don't have this book and you wanna get, a reference of this work. I'm gonna use the Becker's pages, which is more of a universal way of referencing the the text. Uh, it was based off of like a 19th century edition of Aristotle um, works by Emmanuel Becker, prominent, <laughs> significant uh, scholar that translated a lot of Aristotle's work. And apparently that's universal, so I will go ahead and use that reference in case you want to follow along and you don't have this work. That is 50A15. All right, I think I referenced that right. Um, if not, <laughs> oh well, I know the 50A part is correct, but 
the, the 15 last year, but that's the, that's what I'm going to give you. Okay, so in this in this quote, he's talking about um, tragedy. Like, how do we make a good tragedy? And Aristotle says, uh, tragedy is not an imitation of persons. You know, so one of the big focuses in this book is like, um, you know, epics and, and tragedies and these kinds of stories, they're imitations of, you know, uh, real life situations or real life occurrences or real life struggles, All right? He, he focuses a lot on that. Uh, just, you know, and that's like not too crazy kind of thinking, right? His <laughs> actor is a person who imitates, uh, you know, a person, a character, and they pretend to be in these situations. So that makes sense, right? But what Aristotle is saying is, a tragedy is not an imitation of persons, okay? It's not specifically about characters, necessarily, but, act but of actions and of life, okay? Well-being and ill-being reside in action. Oh, let's, let's talk about that. And the goal of life is an activity, not a quality. The goal in life is an activity, not a quality interesting right and so it's not necessarily about the quality of your character it's about the actions the activity that you do with your character right with the qualities that you have okay that's important people possess certain qualities in accordance with their character but they achieve well-being or its opposite on the basis of how they fare Mm -hmm. So, people possess all types of qualities that differentiates them, right? But the qualities alone aren't what's interesting, or what is powerful, or what moves the story, right? or what makes people resonate with the story. It's how they fare with those qualities, right? How do they use those qualities to overcome their situations, or their circumstances, or you know, how, or just deal with the status that they're in. So the imitation of character is not the purpose of what the agents do, okay? You're not just pretending to be a character. <laughs> That's not the only thing that matters. Character is included along with and on account of the actions. So the actions are very important too. So the events, i.e. the plot, are what tragedy is therefore. And that is the most important thing of all. And I'll, I'll just end there with that quote. So it's the actions that are most important when it comes to like a tragedy. And you know, tragedy, sad story. You know, somebody overcoming adversity or dealing with some hardship, all right? And you know, going through the, the uh, actualities of that hardship. Uh, what is most important? What do we resonate with? Is it like, the character, like, oh man, that person, that person is very strong because, you know, they're, they got a lot of, they're buff, <laughs> they got a lot of muscles, right? Or, you know, they're very intelligent, you know, they're, they're just naturally smart, or that person has a lot of wit. They turn any situation into like something you could like laugh at, right? You know, very witty person. Um, you know, these are qualities of a character, right? But are, is that what makes these tragic stories like compelling? Uh, no, it's more so the, the, the way they act with the qualities that they have, right? So how is, how does the witty person use their wit? How does the buff person use their strength or their muscle? Like what, how, in what way do they use their uh, qualities? How does the person use their intelligence, right? It's not just that they're intelligent, but how do they use their intelligence to create actions that move the story forward or the, that you know reconcile with the tragedy that's happening i put in my notes here the content of one's character consists on how they act within their context okay not the context itself okay that's fast i, I wrote that was just my thing um because i was just trying to make sense of this so you know, what makes a person um, good or bad, not necessarily a person good or bad, but what manifests goodness in a person or what manifests badness or like ill will 
or like unrighteousness as opposed to righteousness, even you can go so far as to say evilness. How are these things manifested, right? It's not due to uh, their, the specific context of the character. The character is naturally uh, this, that, or the other thing. It's like, how do they go about using their nature? And in a tragedy, right, it's not necessarily overcoming the adversity because that's why it's tragic, right? Because they don't overcome. But, you know, despite the tragedy happening, there's still this compelling quality of the story because the person is acting in a way that exhibits a kind of goodness. And how is that goodness exhibited? It's the way they use the qualities that they have. Not the qualities themselves, right? You know, when somebody says, wow, that person was really brave, but they're brave how, <laughs> right? How are they brave, right? That person has a lot of endurance. They're able to endure a lot. They got a lot of vitality, a lot of stamina. They can push through a lot of hardship, but like, okay, how? How are they pushing through the hardship? Like, what are they doing that makes that manifest? It's not necessarily, oh, you know, they just naturally got, um, they just got a lot of grit, right? They got a lot of, um, they just are able to take a lot of suffering just because of the way they're built, right? That's not as interesting as, oh, okay, this person dealt with a lot of things in this specific way, and that's how they're able to endure, right? Or, you know, it might be like, some sort of motivation that they've made a this conscious decision about like you know i gotta go through this because you know i love this person and that's what just has to happen right so it's like a, a the decision which is an action right um, and then the interesting part is like well how does that person come to this decision you know and then you know your what's included then is not just the individual action it may be actors, right, acting on the individual, the main character or the protagonist, right? And those are interesting aspects of the story too. Maybe the person changes uh, the way they act based off of other characters uh, who are also acting in certain ways. I think that's pretty important to highlight because it kind of goes along with a lot of what we've been talking about in, in previous videos about like um, decision and choice and like, you know, we've talked about quite a lot about the idea of free will. One's ability to choose or, you know, to act in certain ways as opposed to other ways, um, that's what makes life interesting or meaningful. And that is not necessarily based off of like individual in choice, right? That could be based off of one's environment, right? Or the are other people acting upon the individual. Uh, it's, it's an interconnected web of activity, you know, a network, if you will, of interactions that determines one's, at the end of the day, it is choices, right, that are what is meaningful, right, that brings the meaning and the interest and, uh, you know, the entertainment factor of stories. It isn't just like a character's qualities, right, like Hercules is really strong and buff, right, and that's why he's so cool, right, that gets old really fast. Rather, it's like, well, how does Hercules use his strength in the Odyssey, like Odysseus, <laughs> in, the, in the epic poem of um, the Odyssey. Uh, it, what makes the story interesting is not just like the fight scenes, <laughs> right, or you know the romance scenes. It's like the actions that Odysseus does, like the choices that Odysseus makes. Right? That's what makes the story really compelling, and what makes the tragic moments in the story more like heartfelt. And I thought that was a, a nice distinction that Aristotle made um, because, you know, I think like that's important for uh, you know, stories. Um, it's more about the action of a, a, of a person than the, like the, the qualities of a character that make a story interesting. You know, I think it, it'll be a good idea for, you know, storytellers, uh, people who like writers or filmmakers or people who, you know, poets, even like people who tell stories through music, right? Um, theater, uh, <laughs> playwrights, actors, right? Uh, it's important to like remember like, well, really ultimately what makes the plot, the story interesting is the, the actions that the characters, the actors are making. Uh, not so much 
the qualities of the character. The qualities of the character uh, are important, right? They do play into the whole um, context of what's going on. And the context is very important to consider. But I think ultimately um, it's the decisions <laughs> that the characters make and then the actions that the characters do based off of the decisions that they make, right? And that's all I wanted to say about this <laughs> text. Most of it is just like best practices about writing and literary structure. I mean, in the, Aristotle even goes into depth about what is a noun? What is a verb? <laughs> what is a root word? What is a suffix? What is a predicate? I mean, you know, it starts getting into that and uh, I don't know how interesting that is. Uh, but I thought that one quote in like that specific area of the poetics was interesting. So, you know, I would check it out. It's, it's pretty, pretty fascinating stuff here. It's Aristotle's The Poetics. Well, you've been watching The Black Ponder. Tune in next time for more Philosophical Thought.